everyone in today's video we'll be discussing about tuberculosis it is a topic that is common to all it's an important topic and that's why it's an essay topic in both pathology and microbiology and even in pharmacology anti-tubercular drugs are an important topic so in this video we'll be discussing about the structure of mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, about the etiopathogenesis and the clinical manifestations of tuberculosis the uh, laboratory diagnosis and treatment part will be covered in the subsequent videos hopefully so let's start so the causative organ for uh, tuberculosis is, uh, as we all know, it is mycobacterium tuberculosis. That's the first uh, and the most common organism. There is another species as well, which is a mycobacterium bovis. Now mycobacterium bovis, uh, it is nowadays not seen. It is usually, uh, it usually enters the body by the consumption of pasteurized milk, unpasteurized milk, which is why nowadays we do not see this much. There are a few other species which are not, which are less common, such as Mycobacterium africanum, Mycobacterium microti. We don't have to worry about them much. So there are other species, just know about that. Now let's move into the structure of the Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So before we move into the antigenic structure, so the peculiarity of my, the all species of Mycobacterium, whether it is Mycobacterium tuberculosis or Mycobacterium leprae or even non the tuberculous Mycobacteria, their peculiarity is uh, they are acid fast. That is, they have the ability to retain acid. And this is due to this, the ability of acid fasteners is due to the presence of mycolic acids in their cell wall. So we'll discuss their cell wall uh, within a few seconds. So just know that it is due to the presence of mycolic acids that they have the ability to retain acids and that provides the acid fasteners. Now coming to the gram staining property, they are weakly gram positive. With that, let's move on to the antigenic structure. So this is a structure of cell wall of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. So we have here below, we have the plasma membrane, which is a lipid bilayer. And here we have the red color on top of it attached to the plasma membrane is the LAM, that is the lipoarabinomanens. What is the peculiarity? It is these lipoarabinomanens, which is important. It's an important antigen that will uh, confer the ability of to mycobacterium to resist and proliferate inside the macrophages. So what they will do, we'll uh, understand about that in when we speak about the pathogenesis. The other, uh, as we know, uh, for gram-positive organisms, there, there is a thick peptidoglycan layer, which is also present in mycobacteria. On top of it, we have an arabinogalactin layer. And this arabinogalactin, it provides structure to the cell wall. And finally, we have the mycolic acid layer. So this is the mycolic acid, which is responsible for the acid fastness of bacteria. It also does an additional function. That is the first one is acid fastness. The second one is antibiotic resistance. They reduce the entry of antibiotics into the cell. So they confer antibiotic resistance as well. And the mycolic acid layer, here we have the mycocytes. So that's about the structure of the uh, mycobacterial cell wall. Now let's talk about the etiopathogenesis. So the source of infection, the first and primary source are the humans, the infected humans are the primary source of infection. And then there is the bovine source that is from cows. So the, as I've said, this is nearly eradicated now. It's reduced in most parts of the world. In unpasteurized milk consumption will uh, lead to the entry of mycobacterium bovis. Now, how are they transmitted? Well, human infection, it is transmitted by aerosols. This is the most common route by aerosol transmission. And secondly, is by inoculation. That is uh, direct skin contact with infected patient. And finally, about the bovine transmission, that is by ingestion of unpasteurated milk. These are the three ways by which the mycobacterium enters into our body to cause tuberculosis. Now, what are the risk factors? There are risk factors for transmission and there are risk factors for active infection. So what we need to understand is there are active cases and then uh, there are people who have, the, who we call as sputum positive. These are people who do not have any external manifestations of TB, but their sputum contains mycobacterium tuberculosis. So uh, for transmission, the first and most important group is one is the sputum positive patients, they can they can transmit more effectively than sputum negative patients. And for the other reason could be overcrowding, as we can uh, easily understand why overcrowding would lead to more 
transmission and the third factor is miliary tv we'll discuss about miliary tv later it is basically a really active form of tv with a larger number of cavitary lesions in the lung now coming to the infection so those it is the cmi which is cell mediated immunity which is responsible for controlling the infection so people with low cell mediated immunity or immunocompromised individuals will have a greater tendency to develop active infection so this could be people with aids then uh, transplant people undergoing transplant people with kidney diseases undergoing hemodialysis diabetes and all sorts of things all sorts of such immunocompromised diseases secondly the a sex there are two ranges amongst the older individuals men are more affected where amongst the younger individuals it is the females that are more affected than males with that we move on to the pathogenesis so it occurs in two phases that is one before the activation of cell mediated immunity and what happens after the activation so what we need to understand is it is cell mediated immunity which controls the infection so when the cmi is active the infection is contained and controlled whereas if the cmi is weak or if the uh, basal is virulent enough to overcome our host immunity then we'll progress towards active infection so before the activation of cmi so let's start uh, we know that the basal enters through droplet nuclei aerosol entry and they will pass this is our basal and they will pass through the upper respiratory tract and enters into the lungs in the lungs they will encounter the pulmonary macrophages so these are the pulmonary alveolar macrophages and these alveolar macrophages they will have two receptors which are of importance to us first one is the manos receptors and the second one is the complement receptors now we said that the mycobacterium tuberculosis contains lam that is lipo arabinomenensonin's cell wall when we discuss about the cell wall now this lam uh, will bind to the manos receptors and to the cr3 receptors and by this uh, binding what happens is that they, they will get engulfed by the macrophages so macrophages undergo phagocytosis to engulf our mycobacterium bacilli in the lungs and this process is mediated by c3b opsonization it is opsonized to bacilli which is engulfed by our macrophages now what happens after engulfment usually what happens is that there is a lysozyme right these lysozymes will fuse with the phagosome so this is a phagosome containing the bacilli and the lysozyme and phagosome should fuse and that Uh, sh should kill the mycobacterium tuberculae but what happens is that the lipoarabinomannans present inside the uh, cell wall of mycobacterium they will activate coronins activate coronin coronin is a protein that is it's a host protein and the coronin will activate phosphatase calcineurin calcineurin and this phosphatate calcineurin what they do is they will inhibit the fusion of phagosome with lysosome so they will inhibit the phago lysosome formation as a result what happens is that the mycobacterium tuberculosis do not get killed and hence they will proliferate so what happens is that the mycobacterium tuberculosis will be uh, proliferating inside the phagosome and this is inside the phagosome they will proliferate and they will rupture and this will lead to bacteremia and the bacilli will seed to multiple sites now when does this occur this occur within the first 3 weeks and the patient during this period is asymptomatic despite this bacteremia there there is no symptoms or usually even if symptoms are present it's a mild flu like illness is produced now what happens is next is the activation of cell mediated immunity let's see how that occurs the bacilli as we have said by bacterium it is seed into multiple sites and there are two sites which are important first one is the lymph node and second one is the lung now what happens is that the macrophages act as apcs so the alveolar macrophages and the uh, macrophages inside the lymph nodes they will act as antigen presenting cells and what do they do so these are our macrophages and what they do is they will present the mycobacterial antigen to the uh t helper cells so these are our t helper cells and these t helper cells t cells will get activated into two types that is th1 cells and then we'll have the t helper 2 cells now this is the minor part whereas the major cells are the th uh, helper 1 cells 
Now let's draw the T helper one cells. These are our T helper one cells. Now these T helper one cells, they will secrete interferon alpha. Interferon gamma, sorry, not alpha. Interferon gamma. This is the most important uh, mediator that is released by the TH1 cells. And this uh, interferon gamma does a number of things. Firstly, it will activate the resting macrophages. So there is an activation of macrophages is the first thing that they do. Now inside the macrophages and these activated macrophages, they will engulf the mic mycobacterium to form a phagocytos, to form a phagosome. Next, what happens is that the phagosome fuses with the lysosome to form a phagolysosome. So phagolysosome formation is activated by the interferon gamma. And once the phagolysosome is formed, then the interferon gamma produces nitric oxide, which is lethal to the uh, mycobacterium. They will also produce reactive oxygen species with, and free radicals, which are again lethal to the mycobacterium. There is a fifth job. There is a third thing that they activate. Those are called the defensins. These defensins are antimicrobial peptides present inside the macrophages, which get activated by interferon gamma, and that will lead to killing of mycobacterium tuberculae. And after all of this, uh, the micro macrophage will contain damaged organelles and still some intracellular bacteria. They will be killed by autophagy. They will be destroyed by stimulating autophagy by the interferon gamma. So these are the functions of interferon gamma. That is, they will activate macrophages. Then they will lead to the formation of phagolysosomes, which then uh, then afterwards there will be production of nitric oxide, reaction ox reactive oxygen species and defensins to kill the mycobacterium and to destroy the remaining damaged organelle intracellular bacteria the interferon gamma will stimulate autophagy. And by this response, the uh, the micro uh, the, mac, uh, the tubercle bacilli gets contained. Some other uh, uh, chemokines are also in cytokines are also involved, such as tumor necrosis factor and chemokines. What do they do? Now what happens is that all of these together they will lead to the formation of a granuloma. So these macrophages, they undergo, we have discussed about granuloma in hypersensitivity reaction. These macrophages will undergo, will flatten to form epithelioid cells. And some of them will fuse to form multinucleated giant cells. So large multinucleated giant cells will be formed. This is the macrophage activating response. And these multinucleated giant cells, they will be surrounded by a rim of lymphocytes. remove lymphocytes and this layer of lymphocytes will be externally again surrounded by a peripheral rim of fibroblast so the green color is the fibroblast now such a structure is formed due to the active destruction or active activation of the host immune responses and the central region of this uh, due to this response the central region undergoes caseating necrosis and the structure so formed is called a tubercle or a granuloma, which is a characteristic feature which is present in tuberculosis. So there will be formation of tubercles with necrosis. And this tubercle formation will kill the mycobacteria. Now this is the main response, the macrophage activating response. However, there is also potential for tissue destruction due to the formation of these caseating tubercles. So when the host immunity is weak or when the bacilli are virulent, what happens is that there will be a delayed kind of hypersensitivity reaction. A D DTH reaction will occur with intensive formation of tubercle and active tissue destruction. So in, in, in uh, trying to kill the bacilli, there will be active tissue destruction which occurs and the caseous necrosis becomes liquefied and what happens is that the bacilli gets disseminated throughout the body. They will spread through the hematogenous route, they will directly drain into the airways and they, they will also spread through the lymphatics to the opposite lung and all of this will lead to active infection. So there will be active TB, tuberculosis infection. This occurs when the host immunity, when there is a tissue damaging response instead of uh, a macrophage activating response by the host immunity. That is how active disease occurs. Now let's speak a few words about the TH2 system, that is the minor response. So uh, TH2 cells, they will secrete IL-4, IL-5, and they will activate the humoral immunity, leading to the production of anti-LAM antibodies. Anti-LAM antibodies are formed. Now, uh, since 
uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis is an obligate intracellular organism humoral immune response has a limited role because we know that humoral responses are active against intercellular organisms whereas mycobacterium tuberculosis is an intracellular organism therefore cell mediated immunity is effective whereas humoral immunity is not that effective however these anti la antibodies they play a role in preventing the dissemination they prevent spread of tuberculosis in children so they have a protective role in uh, preventing the dissemination of tuberculosis in children and that's about the pathogenesis in the next video we'll discuss about clinical features